All right, God bless you guys for joining me here at HNLC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. We're going to make sure we get everybody in that's going to be coming in on this particular um, uh, evening here at HNLC Studios. As well as you guys who are out there, actually Facebook, the uh, Instagram area of the program. Uh, we want to make sure we get everybody into the show. As we proceed to go forth, don't want to be redundant. And where we're speaking here, uh, most of us know that you know, we were in the church, we were in this actually program earlier, uh, dealing with the book of Ephesians. Want to got a, got a few more people, want to make sure I get in here and make sure they actually receiving uh, this word that continues to go forth. And for all those who are actually uh, trying their best to get a hold of me on the line, you know, I would appreciate it if you hold your calls. It's not uh, pleasant that I see that you guys continue to call in. You, you, you kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, but I uh, want to make sure I get you know, my YouTube team in here, make sure I get my Podbean team in here. Now, last week we missed out on our actually um, cast team, but we're going to get cast in here to make sure we get uh, cast rolling with us. And for those who are actually um, in the process of you know, calling into the studio uh, during the course of the time of the teaching, we, we ask you just to hold your calls. And if there's something you guys need to get a hold of me with or talk to me about, whether it be prayer or something going on with your ministry, you know, I would love to get a chance to talk with you guys concerning those matters, especially my uh, foreign brothers who are out there in different areas of the country. You know, I really would appreciate you know, a lot of your calls that come in. I really need it and want it, but I want you to kind of hold that for a minute because we do have a lot of uh, calls that's coming in during the course of the line, but we do have times when we do those calls and take calls from a uh, man and woman of God who's going to be a part of the show. But those who come into my actually uh, Spreaker show, it's always going to be Spreaker, you know, dot com. If you hadn't got to the actually um, uh, process of the link, just tap that link. That link will bring you guys right in. For those who come into my actually um, YouTube channel, of course, it's going to be HNLC International. If you want to be a part of what we're doing here right now, I'm actually Breaker Show. It's something that takes place every Sunday evening here at HNLC Studios at 10.30 uh, a.m. It's been going on for close to 12 years now. For those who are just coming in and learning a part of it, hey, this is what we do and this is how we do it. But I want to make sure everybody is in here before we get started and start moving forward with the work that God has called us to do for this evening. As I said before, we're going to be back in the book of Ephesians. And going back to the book of Ephesians, a little different. We talked this earlier today, um, and I actually um, 1230 service for those who join us was over in the book of Romans. You know, Romans talks about the process of, you know, I beseech thee, brother, by the mercies of God, now, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, you're often holy and acceptable, that of a reasonable service. But Paul kind of speaks the same thing over here. We look at the word of God over here in the book of um, Ephesians, Paul's letter to the book of uh, the Ephesians, well, Paul's letter in the Ephesians to the book of people, the people of emphasis. And we look over here, starting over this particular 11th verse. We're going to give you guys time to get there as we continue to unfold the word. And just hear what the word of God is speaking to us on this evening as we go forth uh, here at HNLC Studios. Asking you guys to keep prayers uh, for all my friends and family members and especially our young people. Uh, we want to make sure. We keep our young people in prayer and we want to make sure we're keeping ourselves focused on them and what's going on around them. You know, they've been threatened and been attacked by many different uh, things. Uh, and it's, it's usually it's coming from uh, individuals who never really um, understood the word of God or have any contact with the kingdom of God. And so they, they got ways that they got their own way of doing stuff. And so when we understand that you've been trained in the word of God, you understand that been um, baptized uh, by the Holy Spirit in terms of having your initial understanding about the Word of God. And then as we proceed to go forth, especially in our households, we'll train our kids up a little bit better uh, than we're training them up in terms of what the Word of God has said. And it's no offense to me, you know, in terms of how I'm letting people know this, but I think everybody should come to understand that this day and time, you know, it's not just a small prayer that we need to give. We need to really lay in prayer and we need to really pray for our children, pray for our families, pray for our financial welfare, pray for our health, our strength. All these things need to be brought to attention uh, in the body of Christ as we continue to move forth uh, in this particular land of the living, knowing that the plan that God has for us is more than what we can see. we really got to focus on that. And that even though we're going through trials, ups, downs, back and forth, and it may seem kind of, you know, like God is not there. You know, this is where your faith is really has to step into fruition. You really got this. This is a really trying uh, time. 
for men and women of God who, to really uh, understand that faith is not something we just say. You, you're going to have to understand what the Word of God says in the book of James, that, you know, faith without works is dead. We're going to have to uh, really work at the opportunities to understand that we're going through trials, circumstances, and situations. Even though it seems like the devil is pouncing on our head, we got to stand there. we got to stand there. we got to believe that God said in his word, he's not a God that he should lie, nor a son of a man that he should have to repent. And Father God, we thank you for this word that's coming forth tonight on our break of show. We ask you to declare the word to create, not through me, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. Make me a willing vessel to continue on doing the work which you called me to do, not by validation of any kind of respect of outside inference of what man feels it has to be, but through the Holy Spirit that we may know and understand that you validate the word according to your kingdom, that all men should be blessed according to your word. You say you came that we may have this life, and we may have this life more abundantly. So, Father God, we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ as true leaders in the body of Christ that look over our children. Uh, look of all the families, Father God, and uh, look of all the men and women of God who's continue to go forward with the hard efforts and work to continue to push forth the kingdom and the work and know what's designed to do in a solid form, not by education, but through the revelation of the kingdom of the power of God. Father, we know you're always there with us. You're always hearing us. You're always revealing your words to us when we continue to pray and spend time with you, Father God. You said you'll let us know that he who has an ear, let them hear Teach us, Father God, to get along with you, not get caught up in the hustle and bustle of times and things, that we may continue to find ourselves falling into the traps of the enemy, that we may be pulled away from the very thing we need to do best, and that's trust in you and lean not to our own, but acknowledge you in all your ways. Look of all the young men and women, all the boys and girls, all the families, all the mothers, uh, all the fathers, Father God, look over their finances. Look over their health and their strength, Father God. Make ways for them, Father God. Promotions on their job, Father God. Ways that we don't seem to understand that you're continuing to be a supernatural God in such a supernatural way, Father God, that only you can do. As you said in your word, that we have not seen, we have not heard, and neither has it entered in the heart of any man the things that you already has prepared for those who love you. And Father God, we continue to walk with you, believe in you, and trust in you. I believe your word according to Jeremiah 29, 11. You got a plan for our life, and it's really always more than what we can see. And we thank you, Father God, as we continue to crack forth the word and open up the kingdom of the four winds of the Holy Spirit that we may continue to spread our wings and breathe the breath of the power of what you have given us according to your blood that you shed on the cross that we may clearly know and understand, Father God, our divine purpose in this particular area of life, what we call the relay. That is not through a single individual, through anyone else who looks at themselves as being superior. And as you said in your word, we should not think of ourselves as being more than we ought to think, but we should be soberly minded to believe and declare and decree in this life, in this plan that you have given us before the foundations of the world, that we may continue to look to you, Father God, who is and only shall be and all will be the author and the finish of our faith. As we come together collectively, as the word of God decrees according to the book of Psalms 133, Aaron words say, how good is it for men to dwell together in unity. That means both men and women. As we bring our prayers together collectively, not looking at ourselves as being superior over anyone, but believing, declaring, decree that you already have the plans and thoughts for us. But if we seek you first, the kingdom and all of your righteousness, Father God, even in the midst of turmoil, even in the midst of turbulence, even in the midst of ups and downs, back and forth, things that seem to be Dr. Jekyll and wishy-washy, you are yet said in your word. If you trust in me in the midst of all that is, Father God, you said you're not a God that should should lie. And you said you're not a son of any man that used to have to repent. You have been going to have a commandment to bless. You said you can and you will not reverse that plan. And we believe right now in the name of Jesus for our families, Father God, for our generations, Father God, as we continue to unfold the word through the power of the vision that you have given us as been man and woman, God, to move forth, to know and declare that should be no weapon, that can be no weapon designed, that can be no weapon engineered against your people as we continue to prosper and go forth, evangelizing the word, Father God, looking for all those 
those who are out there who have a heart and have a mind to want to hear that your gospel continue to spread through the hearts and minds of individuals to make them strong in you and the power of your might. Give us the eyes of the eagle, Father God, let us soar beyond the circumstances and situations in our lives that we may clearly know, Father God, you are always in control. Father God, these things I cannot speak of myself. But through the power of the Most High God, that we may clearly know and understand that you are always in control. And that we continue to look to you, Father God, for everything we need in this life, Father God, as we proceed to go forth doing your will and being in your will. As we continue to announce and denounce every negative thing. And we continue to denounce every negative thing and announce every good thing that you have given us that comes from you, Father God, which is in heavenly places. That your blessings, according to Proverbs 10, 22, will open up and expand in our lives. That we may clearly know that your divine favor in our life is always more, it's more than what we can see. We decree the word. We have already declared the word. We speak and call things in position that's out of position. That be not of the word, knowing that your plan is clearly understood. That you said in your word, Father God, the direction can only come to you. You said these things that we deal with in this day of time can only only come by fasting and praying. And we believe, Father God, as you continue to give us that divine purpose, that divine purpose to know and understand what we should do in the events of the things that's going on around us, we will clearly see you, Father God, for who you are. These things we speak not of ourselves, but through the power of the Most High God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord. Amen. Let's look at the Word of God over here. As we look over here in the book of Ephesians. Got me moving around in some areas here. I hope you guys are continuing just to touch and and hear what the word of God is speaking right here that's coming from the kingdom of God. Over in the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter uh, to the people of uh, Emphasis, which is, we talk about Ephesians, the people of Ephesians, the people in Ephesians, the people of Emphasis. And we look very clearly at the word of God. Paul begins to speak about those things that we have already obtained. The word of God says in Ephesians uh, chapter 1 and that 11 verse, in whom we also, look what he says, have obtained. And inheritance being predestined according to look where to his purpose of him who has worked all things after the counsel of his will. I want to make sure we look at it and get a good understanding of that. And we're going to look over in the Amplified Edition as we go to this particular area of scripture. We want to make sure we pinpoint this and really understand that we online to how God looks upon us. That he's not a God, that he's still alive, he's not a son of a man, that he should have to repent. We don't have to put ourselves in the position of looking at ourselves no further than point of, of educational or to which of a man's understanding. But we trust and believe that in the midst of where we are, God has already predestined us, pulled us out before the foundations of the world, set us aside, and already gave us the title deed that we just trust and believe in him in our life. He says over in the book of Ephesians, over in the area of 111, in the Amplified Edition, and he says it like this, In him also we have made God's inheritance, pro, look here, protein to the obtain, look here, protein to the obtain to the inheritance for we have been uh, rede what redefine or rede or, or foreordained. I want to make sure I get it right. Foreordained, chosen and appointed beforehand in accordance to his purpose. I want to make sure I go back there and let you really understand what the word of God is saying right here when we talk about a heritage or a portion, heritage portion. That God has already called us before man even looked upon us, before they can even identify what we're supposed to be. We go back to the book of Jeremiah 1 and 5, created, born, designed, and engineered, already to be a prophet before the nation. That means according to Romans 4 and 17, you and I, not with anybody else pushing us, already have gained the understanding that we can go before God, excuse me, over there in the book of Romans chapter 5, <clears throat> knowing that we're justified by his faith, being preordained, pre-chosen, Pre or I mean, set aside for the purpose for his goodwill according to what he's chosen us. That even though people look at you and man may look at you and feel that you're not worthy of the cause, the word of God say, I've already counted you worthy. When the word of God talks about faith, wisdom, direction, and understanding, a hope and expectation, he goes to the book of Hebrews and he says in the book of Hebrews 11, the Bible talks about the process that we're going to have to have faith in the midst of our storms. Matter of fact, while we're talking about that, let's go ahead and roll on over there to the book of, uh, the book of Hebrews in our Bibles, we have to go and see. Let's look at what it says in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews brings a strong word that really identifies with what we are seeing right here. We go to the book of Hebrews 11. Let's look at the book of Hebrews 11 right quick. 
And let's understand the process of what God is really getting some good uh, teaching here, not by just repetition of words, but just really slowly and getting you to see how God really has divinely chosen you and predestined you according to how your faith moves. And because the will of God is always there to help you in whatever it is you may be struggling with. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to talk to you. The word of God said, now faith is a substance. The thing about the substance is to believe that faith is really set to the point that you have to have your individual faith. Look here, collective faith, is fine. collective faith is fine, but you got to have an individual faith. That means you got to have a personal relationship with God to understand what he's already predained and designed and engineered for you in life that can't no man, no woman, no ministry, no pastor, no teacher, no anybody can take away from you. God says it's already been given to you. You go back to Jeremiah 1 and 5. He said, before you was in your mother's womb, I created and designed you and I called you to be a prophet before the nation. When God calls you to do a work, it doesn't matter what man says, it's what God says. This is why we have to seek you first to king of God. Am I talking to somebody? And all of his righteousness. And then the Bible said, all of these things will be added unto you. The Bible declares, if I walk upright, Psalms 84, 11, no good thing has God ever told me that he would hold for me when I walk upright, when my ways pleases God. When I go to Psalms 1, and the word of God talks in the Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the council. I'm walking in the righteousness of God. I'm walking in the obtainance of what God want me to be, not based on what man said, but when I go into my closet and pray, and I begin to seek God, according to Matthew 6 and 33, I begin to pray. As I shut my door, I close off all the negative things that's been trying to bombard me and pull me to whatever direction they feel it need to be being scorned, talked about, shut down, but I got to believe and trust in the midst of the storm. God plan for me is always more than what I can see. Notice what he said to go through that plan. What God says right here is now faith is a substance of things hoped for. I want you to get understanding this. The evidence, he talks like a, like a lawyer. He said, I'm going to bring you the evidence, and I want you to understand the evidence that I'm going to bring before you is already predestined in what I called you to be. I died on the cross that you may have the right to the tree of life. That's, a, that's an eyewitness who believe that when the word of God says, according to the book of Romans 8, 9, and 10, what sayest thou? The word of God knew you and in your mouth. That means you got to confess that what God has already done on the cross, that you may have the right and know through the right that Christ has given you, that you may walk according to his will, his purpose, and the power. Not being denied or, or being put or ridiculed by any man or any sort of any type. But you got to really understand that your ways pleases God. That means my relationship, my relationship with God has got to come to a facto. Am I understanding what I'm saying? It's got to be verified by not what man said, but what God says. Because he's the one saying that he has set me apart and he has preordained, preordained me before the foundations of the world. So now when someone preordains you and calls you in a position, there's no one who can take you out. Especially from a man-made standpoint of view. That's when your ways pleases God. This is when your faith comes in to understand. He said, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He said, by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the world was formed by words. That means when you speak a word, you declare a word according to the kingdom of God. The Bible hears the word. The faith you have the back behind to push that word. The Bible declares according to Psalms 84, 11, now I see what you have. And then, as a matter of fact, if you think about Psalms 84, 11, he says in the first part of Psalms 84, 11, he said, I'm a son in a shield. Not only am I a son and ship, but then there's nothing good that I would hold from you if your walk is like it says in Psalms 1. When, my, when your ways pleases God, Psalms 1 tells you, blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But my ways begin to delight the Lord, and in the delight of the Lord, he begins to give me power, glory, by the rivers of water. They obtain the things that I need to speak, declare, call things in position. Romans 4 and 17, the know I got Ephesians 1 21 all over my life. The Bible declares according to Ephesians 1 21, far above all princes and powers and dominions, not only names in this world, but everything. Do you understand what he's saying? I don't care 
care what it may be that's coming at you in your life. I don't care what you're dealing with. Matter of fact, you understand the word of God when he tells you that very word in Jeremiah 32 and 17. He says that anything too hard for me to do. He runs right back over from Jeremiah 32 and 17, runs over to Jeremiah 27, talks about your faith and your, your health and your strength. I'm the creator of all flesh. Am I there with somebody? Is there anything too hard for a creator, a design, and an engineer to do if you trust in them? You have the faith to believe to know who I say I'm in because I have declared that I have already obtained things for you in the kingdom. That's if you walk up, right? Let's look at this on the 11th verse again. Let's go over here. He says once again in the 11th verse, he said, for, he said, for whom we also have obtained. Look what he says. You have obtained an inheritance. There's something there's something God has for you, but you got to understand what the uh, the book says, the book of where God says in Matthew 6 and 30, you got to seek God for what he has already obtained for you to have. The Bible says he's obtained, he's have inheritance for you, you and you only in your life. And he declares the decree being predestined, listen to what he's saying, in whom you also have obtained, it's yours. And then he guarantees and declares the decree that according to his purpose, his will, working after all, look at all things after the counsel of his own will. Not what man says, not how they look at you, not what they think of you. Your ways has got to please God. If they got a problem with that, then let them solve that problem on their own. Your job is to walk upright. And when you walk upright, your ways pleases God. When, you walk, when, you, when your ways pleases, guess what? Desires come. Heart desires come. Am I talking to somebody? The word of God comes on down. He, he want to look at this once again because it's really uh, bringing a, a, a very powerful and solidified word to the purpose. How God really looks at it in the amplified edition. When you look at it, when it's in him, he also was made. Look here. It parenthesized God heritage. God heritage. It's, it's made. It's God's heritage. That means it's his heritage. It's his history. It's what he has in store for you. It's his Jeremiah 29, 11. He goes on and said, and he said, a portion. He said, end up obtain an inheritance. For we had been foreordained, chosen, and look here, chosen and appointed before what? The accordance in which he has, look, he has purpose. To work out everything in agreement with the counsel and the design of his own will. I got my own counsel. I don't got man's counsel. What you got to do is only say to seek me. When you seek me, I show you what my counsel said versus what man's counsel says. Man's counsel said, well, you don't have this. You, 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 you're there. You don't have a, they, they got all kinds of things to bring you out of agreement to what God already bring, what God has already brought you in agreement with. So when you understand and realize that when your ways pleases God, the Bible says he will give you the desires of what's already obtained, foreordained, appointed beforehand for you. He comes on down this particular 11th verse. On um, down this particular 12th verse. Notice what it says in the 12th verse. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in him. Now, this is amazing. The Bible talks about the main ways pleases God. He will give him the desires of his heart. But the word of God says right here in this particular scripture, he said that we should be the praise of his glory. Notice what another part said, who first trusted in him. You know, the word of God says, trust in the Lord. That's what Proverbs 3 and 5, and lean not to your own understanding. See, when you start to look into your own understanding, you begin to get things discombobulated. Because you're looking at it from a, a what we call a, a, a mortal point of view, not an immortal point of view, but a mortal point of view. It, it don't seem right because of what my thoughts think it may be. It don't seem right because it don't look like it's the direction. But God said, no, 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 no. First, trust in Christ. When you trust in Christ, he comes on down to the 30th verse. And in him, you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. Now, the word of truth, this is amazing, man, the woman of God. The word of truth is when you begin to understand what he said back in Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you now present your body as a living sacrificial offering. Look what he says, holy 
and acceptable that of a reasonable source be not conformed to this world. Notice what he's saying. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now that's a perfect will that God has for you. In that perfect will, the word of God declares and decrees right there, in him who you also trusted after ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and whom you, whom you also, after you were believed, you were sealed. The what he's saying, I was talking to Apostle Von Peek about this the other day, how you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit is a promise. The Bible said that he will lead you into all truth, but I got to trust in him. I got to go back to the Hebrews and I got to understand what the book of Hebrews said. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtain a good report. They prove and declare these things they know for a fact happened. These are the reports they gave you. It's the word of God decrees the word is Isaiah 53. For who has believed the report? The Quiz says, and who has the arms of that report been revealed? The Bible declares he was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. That's Isaiah 53. And the chastisement of his peace was upon you. And it's by his stripes you were healed. Let me, let's get over there and think about that particular scripture. And let's look at the word of God is really speaking about it. Because you, you, you want to make sure you're giving your people the right information that they need as you go forth, giving them the word of God. The word of God comes back over here. And let's go to the book of, um, the book of um, Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's speaking right here. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's see what we got right here. Isaiah. Let's look at Isaiah over here. Um, yeah, that's what we want right there. The book of Isaiah. Let's look at the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah says in Isaiah 53, if you look at it along with me, we'll get a good understanding of how God's word never fails. It never goes back. Matter of fact, Isaiah declares a word in there so strong, I forget what the gift that he said, all our sins were like scarlet, but God has made us whiter than snow. That means we all have something. We all got a cut. We all got something. We all got a thorn that we got to deal with in life. But sometimes we just don't want to curve it on up. And we want to look, look to me, man. Well, I'm, 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 y'all don't want me to be talking to you. So you want to cover your thorn up. Excuse me. You want to cover your thorn up and you want to talk about everybody else's thorn. But as I go to the book of Isaiah, now, oh, I'm, well, you can get this. We go to the book of Isaiah, we go to Isaiah 53. You go to Isaiah 53. Now look what it says over there in that particular area, I believe, uh, the fifth verse. Look what it says. But he was wounded. Look at the past tense of what Christ has already said, in the midst of me doing this, I've already preordained, predestined you, despite of what man says, for my choice and what I wanted in the inheritance that I put in you. It's like he said in Jeremiah 1 and 5. Created, born, designed, and engineered before the what? Before the foundations of earth. And I put you in the womb of her. I put you in the womb of your mother. And I saw you to be what I wanted you to be. That's what Jeremiah 1 and 5 is really saying. Before you was born. Before the found, before you was created, before you was engineered in your mother's womb, I called you. I gave you that gift. It's not what man told you. I sent him as being your character. The help you was already in you. And sometimes I see you as the people just to help you. Just got to keep moving. It's not church hopping. It's like a relay. Sometimes in the midst of a relay, you stay there and learn what you need to learn. But then God begins to branch you out. It's like an eagle. You ever seen an eagle in the nest? She never hopes that that eagle is going to stay there. She bored them for a purpose, then to move them out. Let them continue to go on and make more eagles. It's like the same thing God says in the, the book of John chapter 15, the true vine. And God is the vine dresser. But over here in this area of the book of Isaiah, over in Isaiah 53 and 5, he said, but he was wounded. The inkling said he was wounded. The work was already done. He was wounded for our transgressions. Look, he was bruised for our iniquities. Look what it says. The chastisement, come on somebody, of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, not ours, with his stripes, we are healed. The word of God goes on and says, we are all like sheep going astray. That's all of us. How are we going astray? Well, go back to the book of Ephesians. Go back to the book of Romans. We see that very thing inherited about how we were as being men and women of God. Ephesians makes it very clear that we were not trespassing sins. In the past time, we all once walked the course of the world. We were straight in. The Bible said we are all like sheep going straight. And they have turned, look, everyone his own way. Well, that's what, this, this is when the foundation of teaching about the word of God comes in the heart of an individual. 
This is when this is when the foundational teaching comes. Not to pull people to your group, but pull them to the kingdom work. Excuse me. It's God's work. It's God's inheritance. That's what he says in 1 Peter 1 and 5. Don't be a lord over the people. Don't give them words of spookism. Trying to trap them in. Don't give them slot words. And behind the point, you pull in slot machines. Yeah, we got to give. We understand that. We understand our portion of 10%. But God said be a cheerful giver. You understand the study about the book of Malachi? You need to understand it. You say you went to seminary. You understand? You know, it's about the priests. That was taking care of the temple priests. But Jesus said in this day and time, you got to be a cheerful giver. That means whenever God speaks and touches your heart, your hand opens up. When my wife does something pleasurable for me, not, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know how everybody's situation is, but I see things, I become a more desirable for her. Flowers, uh, rings, whatever she wants that makes her happy. Because I know how she treats me. She loves me. She takes care of me. I love her. I look after her. I take care of her. She loves me. I love her. My daughter loves me. In the midst of the things that sometimes go in the life of these kids, we can't just throw them away to the curb. Even though people always want to gossip about their own situation, but the word of God keeps telling them, well, why don't you just sweep around your own back door? See, that's, that's when the word of God comes over there in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. You got to understand that according to the book of Ephesians, the Bible said we were all jacked up. In our past times. And we all, I ain't saying you got to stay there, but you were there. So that's your point. So you got to accept the fact that you were there. And if it wasn't for God in your life, you wouldn't be anywhere. If it wasn't for the Lord on my side, where would I be? You can look back and say all you want, but we don't stay. No, we don't stay there. But you don't take the word of God, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that says, if any man to be in Christ, he's a new creature. All old things that pass away, and you continue to go out there and sin and begin to bombard and say things about people that you know you're not supposed to say. Give a bone, carry a bone. You can't do that. Gossip is one of the worst things you can do in the body of Christ. If that's something you don't have about an individual you don't like, leave them alone. Leave them alone and let them go their way. Let them go about their business. You pray for them. You keep it moving. The word of God declares and decrees on this, in this area. He says over there in that, in that particular sixth verse of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, um, Isaiah 5, in that particular area, uh, 53 and uh, 6, he said, we are all like sheep having gone astray. And we have turned everyone, look here, to his side, uh, his own way. And the Lord has led him, has, has laid on him the iniquities of us all. Now, now I want to make sure I get understanding to make sure nobody God ain't the one going beat and whooping on nobody. Ain't that kind of guy. He ain't no beat you down, kill you, God. He'll get at you. But he won't, you know, he wants you want you to understand that you just can't keep walking unrightly and receive the blessing from God. You know, when a man ways please God, the blessings of your heart, think about the opposite of that. Displeasing God, he's not going to beat you down. He's just going to hold things in position. You get yourself back together. He's not going to do you like men do you. They ain't not going to talk. He's not going to talk about you, but you now. He's going to constantly wait for you to come back because he loves you. He cares for you. Now, we look at that same verse in the sixth, uh, sixth verse in Isaiah 53 and 6. In the Amplified Edition, he says, he said, all we like sheep have gone astray. Now, just on that part right there brings me back to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 and 1. We're going to stay there for a minute. If you just get in your mind, you can hold the page if you want to. We have turned everyone to his own way. Anarchy. <laughs> We've got our own way of doing stuff. We've got our own ideas of how we think this thing's supposed to be. He goes on down in that particular second half of that. He said, And the Lord has made to light upon him the guilt of and iniquities of us all. Uh, I'm just trying to tell you, man, when you're out of line with God, everything in the dark is going to come to light. It's just a matter of time. Let's go back over here to the area of the book of uh, the book of Ephesians because we got to get out of here. And we're going to look at this word over here in this particular 12th verse. And it's 13 verse. And the 13 verse says, In whom we also trusted after we have heard the truth of the gospel of salvation, in whom we also Look, after they believed, were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Look what he says. That we should be, we be to the praise of his glory. Whom first trusted in him. And whom ye also trusted 
after you heard the word of God. Faith come by hearing, hearing come by the word of God. The truth of the gospel of salvation, and whom we also after that believed him who was sealed with the holy promise, with the holy uh, spirit of promise. God's word will not go back void. When God says, when you when you when you come to Him, admit your ways, and and and, and that He says in Romans ten eight nine, and say you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, God says I won't hold back from you. He comes over in that fourteen verse over in the book of Ephesians one and fourteen. He says, in whom is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased promise. The, ooh, Jesus, you already purchased and already given an inheritance, a promise of permission. And to the praise of his glory, you already won. Man, I tell you, you haven't won because you don't have enough education. You know, I've been to a lot of seminaries. Been to a lot of seminaries. Matter of fact, one of the best seminaries probably in the state of Texas, Bishop College. We were known for pushing out great preachers. That's what we were. Sometimes they had to get called us to other kind of names. But in my sports career, in the time I was there with Bishop, Court, Bishop College, God pulled me to do something a little different. As they pulled me to do something a little different, I began to obtain and doing the work of the kingdom of God because I know what God is calling me to do. And this is why I am right now, almost 40 something years later, you know, doing the work of the kingdom and continue to doing the work of the kingdom and not looking at anyone to the point to make me feel that I have to be in an arena with somebody to be populated the way they want me to be. You got to run your own race, you got to know your own time. You got to believe and declare the work that God has for you is always more than what you can see. Remember, when a man ways pleases God, the Bible says he will give you the desires of your heart. Man, the woman of God, it's always a pleasure. But you have to join me here at HMLC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. As always, to my beautiful wife, keep us in prayer. As we keep my beautiful young daughter and all the rest of the young daughters and kids in prayer. My son Alonzo, Ricky, Amber, all of them, you know, the little post grandkids. We keep them all posted up. That's what we're supposed to do. We go to Claire. I'm kind of a no-nonsense guy. I don't do a whole lot. Of, I don't kind of jerk around with people a whole lot. I mean, I do. I have fun. I love having fun, especially the most fun I have is my little daughter. She cracks me up. She keeps me cracking. That's my that's my little girl there. Amber keeps me cracking up, too. But my boys, they are really serious, and I think the enemy is trying his best to come against them, but I believe they got a word in them to go forth to do what God has called them to do. Man, woman, God, such a blessing. Such a blessing to be with you at HNOC Studios. Those who are joining my Facebook, we're going to pull you guys out of here right now. We're praying for you, keeping you lift up. We're declaring what it's got in and over your life. We know that God's plan for you is really more than what we can see. We're going to go ahead and pull you guys out. We thank you guys once again for Facebook for being with us. Also, we're going to go into our Axie Studio over here and deal with the man and woman God that's with us over in our Axie area of our Podbean show, which is a great Podbean show. And we thank God for them being with us, as always, here at HNLC Studios. Much love out to our Podbean show, and we're always with them forever. God bless them. We're going to go ahead and pull them away and pull them out of here. And it's you know just an opportunity for them to just continue to be joining us. They always join us at Podbean, and I actually... Um, Cast shows, always cast is always there with us. Even though it's either in the day or the night, whatever form of country they listen for, you can listen right here in the United States. You just got to go to Harvest New Life Church or you other Apostle Charles Ellis under that cast FM station, and you will see the work that we're doing there. And we thank God for them being with us, and we love cast. We thank God for all your prayers and all that you're doing for us. Amen, man, and woman, God. We thank you guys, okay? We good night. We're going to pull them out at this particular time. We thank God for them. Our YouTube team. The YouTube team has always been there. Give them a thumbs up. I'm going to give myself a thumbs up. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Don't know one else give me a thumbs up. I'm going to give myself a thumbs up. Because I learned something from what I was talking today. I turned from my own self. And that's what you got to do. Sometimes minister the words between you and the Holy Spirit. It's not so much about the validation of crowds of people. You got to understand what God is telling you. He pipes stuff through. He filters up to you through the Holy Spirit that you may clearly see and understand that his plan for you is always more than what you can see. Man, well, God, it's a blessing over our actually YouTube station. We thank you guys for being with us. It's just a pleasure to have you on board with us on tonight on our Axie Breaker Show. Until then, hey, look, God bless you guys. We love you. And we thank God for them as we push them out and get them on out of here. I yeah, know they got things they got to do. Just like I got things I got to do. And uh, we're just going to continue to just keep moving and just see the work of what God is doing in our life and around our life. 
in this point. I'm kind of glad that you guys. I'm glad over here because I got a lot of stations going on. Sometimes we got stations going on all around here. And you just got to really just stay with me because it's a lot that's going on here at HMC Studios. And we thank God for y'all joining and being with us, okay? Y'all take care. I'll tell you about actually um, casting from the station. We thank God for you for being with us always here at HMC Studios. Y'all the best. And to Spreaker, Spreaker, we thank you guys for being with us as well. And we're going to go ahead and sign out with Spreaker. And we thank you guys once again. Sound like I'm being redundant, but there's multiple shows that we actually curving off on. Y'all be blessed.